Welcome to Good Shepherd Baptist Church streaming services. Catch us at goodshepherdbaptist.org or on our Facebook page every Sunday at 10 a.m. Also join us on Mondays at 6 p.m. and Wednesdays at 6.30 p.m. The days and times listed on your screen are also available on the website. In just a few moments, we will be joining Bishop Jeffrey L. Reeve Sr., Senior Pastor of Good Shepherd Baptist Church with today's message. We can be reached at goodshepherdbaptist.org. Follow us on social media on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Also, download the Good Shepherd app from the Apple iOS App Store, Google Play, or Amazon App Store. And giving online is easy. Go to goodshepherdbaptist.org and click the Give Online banner. Or, using the app, click the Give Online icon. Good Shepherd, this is Dr. Angel White, and I want to invite all of our parents to a meeting. This meeting is designed just for you. It will be myself, Dr. Margie Smith, and Deacon Erica Stewart, and we will be creating a safe space where we can offer coping skills, strategies, and solutions while you are juggling work, maybe school, and virtual learning. 
We understand that during this time, some of our students have expressed that they are stressed, they're having a hard time making friends. And so we just wanna make sure that we also reach out to our parents and make sure that you have a safe space where you can vent or just listen to us as we facilitate this conversation. We want you to join us on Thursday, October the 29th at 7 o'clock p.m. That's Thursday, October the 29th at 7 o'clock p.m. And how can you join? Just get a pen and paper and write down a white at goodshepherdbaptist.org. That's a white at goodshepherdbaptist.org. And when you write that down, take a moment, email me, and I will send you the link to our very important meeting. Again, this is just for you and we hope to see you there. Thank you so much. Lord, we love you this morning. You are worthy of all the glory, all the honor, and all of the praise. We honor you.
brothers and sisters, we were created to worship God. And I don't know what you came to do this morning, but I've come for that express purpose, to give worship and praise unto God who has never failed me in my life. I worship and praise a God who has favored me with more than I deserve. I've come to worship and praise God uh, because he is worthy to be praised. I want you to bow your heads with me this morning as we go to God in prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you again for this Lord's Day. We thank you, Lord, for permitting us this signal honor and privilege to uh, come together virtually. We ask, oh God, that you will bless our time together this morning. We pray, God, that your word will fall on good ground that our ears and our hearts and our minds will be open to receive all it is that the Spirit is trying to say to us. And Lord, I pray that you will slow me down in my mind, that you will, oh God, speed me up in my thoughts. I ask, Lord, that you will give me all that I must say to your people. And I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity again. It is in Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. I want to invite your attention this morning to the Gospel of Luke chapter 4 and verse 40. The Gospel of Luke chapter 4, the 40th verse. And from the New Living Translation of the Bible, it reads this way. It says, as the sun went down that evening, people throughout the village brought sick family members to Jesus. No matter what their diseases were, the touch of his hand healed everyone. Can I read that again? It says, as the sun went down that evening, people throughout the village brought sick family members to Jesus. No matter what their diseases were, the touch of his hand healed everyone. For the few moments that we're together this morning, I want to talk to all of us from this thought. There's healing in your hands. There's healing in your hands. I know some of you are saying already, as you watch the beginning of this sermonic presentation, uh, that that's clearly not what the text says. The text says that it was the touch that the diseased received from Jesus' hand uh, that resulted in healing in their bodies. You're saying that it's not my hand, Bishop, it is the hand of Jesus that needs to touch those uh, whose lives are stricken with disease and ailments so that they can recover. But my brothers and sisters, uh, I believe that that is true, but I also know that the work of Christ is finished. The work of Christ came to a climactic conclusion uh, when Jesus died death by crucifixion on a cross. And prior to his departure, he makes his disciples to know that there will be placed within them a deposit of himself in the form of the Holy Spirit, and because of his departure and the deposit, they will be able to possess the same power that he had. In fact, Jesus told them, he said that because of it, the works that you see me do, and greater works than these shall you be able to do, he said, because I have left you. And so this is the suggestion of this sermonic presentation this morning. Uh, that the same power to heal that was in the hand of Christ has now been transferred into the hands of those of us who operate in his stead. Let me see if I can set it up and make my claim. The, the opening verse there, or verse 40, says that as the sun went down that evening, uh, that phrase cannot be overlooked, it says that the sun had gone down that evening. It was late in the day. And as we're going to discover uh, in the rest of this uh, sermon, I'm going to show you that Jesus had had already a busy day. 
But at the end of that day, when the sun was going down, when it was evening time, the Bible says that there were persons who brought their sick family members to Jesus. And Jesus, as the sun went down, Jesus, uh, at evening time, he extended his hand and he touched them. And the Bible says everyone that had a disease was healed. My brothers and sisters, uh, healing hands are needed. Healing hands are necessary. And if Christ's work on the cross, amen, brought his work here on earth to a conclusion, you and I who commence upon his conclusion, it's important that we have healing hands because sometimes the needs of the people cannot always be narrowed down, not only to a specific kind, but more importantly, uh, the uh, uh, needs of people cannot be narrowed down to a certain time. It's not, it would be one thing if we could bring all of the people who need it, amen, the kind of help that God and Christ can provide. If, if we could get everybody together, amen, in the church at one time, maybe on a Sunday, amen, and address everybody's needs, that would be convenient, that would be wonderful. But the truth of the matter is, Amen. You cannot narrow down to a certain time when a person is going to have a need. And here is what I want to get you to understand, child of God. Amen. That Jesus, at evening, when the sun had gone down, after a long, arduous day, amen, of activity, amen. Matter of fact, not one day, but more over uh, the course of two days, uh, Jesus has been involved intensely in ministry, and on this evening when he clearly could use some rest, uh, the opportunity to rest is not afforded to him because the needs of the people are great. And in the mind of Christ, child of God, the need of the people is more important than what may have been his own need. Again, the text says, child of God, amen, that there was no shortage in the Lord's power. The Bible says that when the Lord touched them with his hand, I'm talking about not in the morning time, not at noon, but at night, and when the sun had gone down, when one would have thought, amen, that phys physically he would have been exhausted, but the one thinks that he might have been spiritually depleted, amen, after over a day of ministry activities, the word says that he had enough power in his hand to touch every one of them and have them walk away healed. I don't know about you, child of God, if that's the kind of power Christ had, and if that's the kind of power I'm supposed to have, I want to know how can I get it. Well, first of all, let me suggest to you, my friends, that possessing this kind of power to heal is going to require preparation. Let the church say preparation. This kind of power to heal, amen, is going to require that you and I be spiritually prepared and matured, amen, in order to possess it. Let me suggest on the basis of Luke chapter 4, and I pray that you've kept your Bibles open. I pray that your devices are still tuned and turned in uh, to Luke chapter 4. We're going to go back to uh, verse number 1, and we're going to discover the first thing that will prepare us to possess this kind of power to heal. In verses 1 through 13, what we learn is that this is a power that must be tested on self before it is tried on sickness. Let me try that one more time. Somebody text that in the comments if you don't mind. That the power to heal is a power that must be tested on self before it is tried on sickness. May I suggest to you, my friends, that in verses 1 through 13, we discover <clears throat> that that's when Christ Amen. Being led by the Holy Spirit, amen, into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And child of God, if you're going to have this kind of power to heal, amen, you got to be spiritually tough enough to tackle satanic temptation. It's interesting, my friends, how so many 
persons, amen, want to be used by God in specific and supernatural ways. Amen. We want to be able to lay our hands on the sick and they recover. But sometimes the same person, amen, that desires to bring about change and healing in the lives of others are the same ones, my friends, amen, who cannot fight a good fight against the enemy. I'm going to try it one more time, and I'm going to tell you that you and I, amen, have, have to have first the ability, amen, to test this power out on self. Amen. Before we try it out on sickness, you know, amen. The Bible says that Jesus there in the wilderness, amen, after, be tempt, after being tempted by Satan, amen, on three su successive occasions, the Bible says that Jesus was able to successfully defeat him. Amen. When he was tempted in the various areas of his flesh, Amen. To give his allegiance over to the adversary. Amen. He resisted in the power of God. And that's what I want to tell you, child of God. You got to be able to fight. Amen. A fight against the enemy. You got to have enough spiritual power. Amen. To resist the attacks of the adversary. I'm going to tell you, this is what Paul says in another place in the Bible. He reminds us, a child of God, that while you and I, amen, are preaching to others, that while you and I are blessing others, if we're not careful, if we don't try this power out on self, we ourselves will become a castaway. All right, let me go a little bit further if I can this morning and tell you that this is a power that must be tested on self before it is tried out on sickness. But then secondly, this is a power whose development happens in the halls of disappointment. Let the church say disappointment. I said again, this is a power whose development happens in the halls of disappointment. Walk with me, if you don't mind, very quickly through verses 14 through 30 of the text. There in Luke 4, and the Bible says that Jesus, having now come out of the wilderness, Amen. The devil behind him, he goes to Capernaum, his own hometown. He goes to church, as it were, and he, the Bible says that he asked for the book, and the book was given to him, and he read out of the Old Testament scroll. Amen. He ascribed what he read to himself, and he said that the same anointing that the prophet spoke about, he's saying, it's on me. In fact, he said to them that this day the scripture is fulfilled in your ears. The Bible says then that Jesus, amen, gave the scroll back, sat down, and everybody then all of a sudden had comments to make. There were those in his community that were uh, startled at the fact that Jesus would make the claim that the, that the anointing that the prophet said would be on the Messiah was on him. Could it be, in fact, that Jesus was, in fact, claiming that he was the Messiah? Again, there were those in his community, those, amen, who were close to him. There were persons, amen, who thought they knew him best. There were persons that grew up with him in the hood. There were persons, amen, who knew of his family, and they were hard-pressed to believe that what Christ said about himself could, in fact, be true. Can I tell you, my friends, it's, it's a disappointing thing, amen, <clears throat> to be looked down upon by the people who are closest to you. I said it's a disappointing thing, amen, for people who are right there close to you in your community, within your circle of influence, who don't have the faith in you to believe that your life can become anything other than what they can see it to be. I said it's a, it's a, uh, it's a disappointing thing. But can I tell you, child of God, if you're going to have the power of God in your hands to heal, amen, you're going to have to be able to endure some disappointment. My brothers and sisters, it's hard. It's going to be hard for you to get somebody else delivered, and you ain't never been disappointed. My brothers and sisters, you got to be personally secure enough to withstand societal rejection. And you got to understand that when you have this kind of power Amen. That's able to affect healing in the lives of others. You got to understand, child of God, that this sets you apart sometimes and places you outside, amen, your normal circle. And you got to understand that sometimes God will put something in you. And because you have allowed the thing that God has put in you to develop, 
by reason of disappointment. There are people who will look at you strangely, but you've got to be able to deal with that kind of rejection. Amen. May I suggest to you, my friends, you're never going to be fully committed to the work that God has called you to until you're able to endure rejection. You can't always worry about how somebody's going to respond to you. You got to get to the place where you mature, amen, and understand that, listen, the same way, amen, that they're treating you, they've treated others before you. Come on, it's right there in the text. Jesus says when they rejected him, amen, there in his own hometown, amen, he tells them in so many words, amen, I'm not the first one that you've rejected. I'm not going to take it personally, amen, that's just where you are, amen, you believe, amen, you have been, how can I say this, so extrinsically tied, amen, to your circumstance and your condition, amen, and to your uh, societal surroundings that you don't think anything can be different anywhere with anybody, but I've got to tell you, child of God, that's where you and I have got to get to, amen, we got to be personally secure enough to sustain societal rejection, Boy, I wish I had time to run this rabbit a little bit further down the road and tell you, child of God, amen, you just can't worry about what everybody thinks and feels about you. Amen. Sometimes you just got to lick your wounds and go on in Jesus' name. It doesn't mean that you're not going to cry some tears, amen, and wet your pillow in the midnight hour. It's not going to mean that it's not going to be those moments, amen, after trying hard that you're going to feel deflated. Yes, you will. Amen. Sometimes, amen, the critical comments of others can knock the wind out of your sails. But you've got to learn how to get up again, child of God, and understand that the pain that you feel and the disappointment that you feel, feel, amen, will result in you having the power to make a difference in somebody else's life. Let me go another further and tell you, my friends, that this is the kind of power, amen, that's got to be tested on self before it's tried on sickness. It's the kind of power whose development happens in the halls of disappointment. But thirdly, I want to suggest, amen, that it is also to be able to handle the power with humility, despite what you hear people say about you. My brothers and sisters, may I suggest to you, amen, that right after Jesus uh, is run out of his own hometown, the Bible says on another Sabbath, he's back in the temple. And the Bible says that while he was standing up, amen, and he is teaching that day, the Bible says that there was a man that had in him a demon spirit, and he tried to interrupt the service. You know the story. Amen. Jesus commanded the man to be quiet, also commanded the spirit to come out of the man. The Bible says the spirit threw the man down on the ground. Amen. But the spirit came out of the man. You've heard me say many times that when the devil knows he can't hold you, he'll try to hurt you on the way out. Well, the Bible says when they saw this awesome display, amen, of Jesus' ability and power, the Bible says that all those who witnessed it were in an uproar. They said, this man is bad. They said, this man not only speaks with authority, amen, but he has power, amen, that demons are subject to. And I've got to tell you that they're talking good about him now. Back in Capernaum, they were talking bad about him, amen. But when they saw a miracle, when they saw a sign, all of a sudden, amen, what Jesus said about himself was, was legitimized in their ears. But I want to tell you, child of God, amen, even when you make it, amen, to the marquee, even when you become the headliner of the show, even when, come on, you stop being amen, fodder for gossip, amen, in conclaves of secrecy and people, amen, are doing all they can to get in your face and smile. May I help you, child of God, and tell you that you are to allow the recent past to serve as a reminder of how short-lived your popularity can be. Amen. Can I tell you, my friends, having the power of God, amen, to heal and to bring about change in the lives of others has got to be managed properly. You got to walk in a spirit of humility. Amen. You've got to understand, amen, that even though they're calling your name today, amen, in one way, they may call your name tomorrow 
in another way. Amen. Come on. You might as well come on and help me here. Jesus can bear witness to this on another occasion. There, amen, near the conclusion of his earthly ministry, the Bible says on one day they were crying, Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. And before the weekend was over, they were saying, crucify him. And what I'm trying to tell you, child of God, amen, you got to allow the recent past, amen, to serve as a reminder to you how short-lived your popularity can be. You can't be in this for the sake of making a name for yourself. Amen. You can't be trusted with this kind of power if you're trying to build your own kingdom. Amen. You don't you can't be trusted with this kind of power if you don't have a full understanding. Amen. Not only of the advantage but also more importantly the assignment that God has given to you. And so I want to tell you, child of God, amen, listen, you got to continue to walk in humility. I mean, isn't it an ugly thing to see? As I turn the corner here today, isn't it ugly to see someone that you know has been endowed, amen, with a special unction and anointing of God's presence and power, and you see them walking around with their head in the air, they're they, they almost act as if they're taking glamour shots. They, I wish they had a witness. They always want their face in front of the camera. They they love the stage. I wish I had a witness here. Amen. I know I ought not bring this up, but I, I heard I heard uh, uh, something about this in a movie, in the Malcolm X movie. It's a narcotic. It's a drug. You got to be careful. Amen. And don't believe your own press. You got to understand that what you have, God gave it to you. Amen. And what you have, even though though God gave it to you, you don't deserve to have it. But thank God, because he gave it to you, you had enough spiritual maturity to allow the gift of God to be developed in your life. Walk with humility. I got to let you all go, but I got to close with this and tell you verses 38 through 41. We're talking about the power of God to heal. It is the power to resume ministry in the place where most people are seeking to rest from it. Right there in verse 40, I take you back again. The Bible says that when he, after he, uh, after he leaves church and has cast out the demon, he goes to Peter's house. And you know, the Bible says that Peter, Peter's mother-in-law was sick of a fever, and they asked Jesus to heal her. He goes right on in the room, and he, he touches her, amen, grabs her hand, lifts her up, and the Bible says she recovered her strength. The Bible says that upon recovering her strength, uh, she went in and she prepared a meal for them. And the Bible says, and here it comes now, amen, when, it was, when the sun had set and it was evening, the Bible says people from throughout the community, they have heard now about how Jesus uh, drove out a demon from a man. They have heard now, amen, how Jesus has healed Peter's mother-in-law. The Bible says that they brought all of their sick family members to Jesus, ran them right down there to Peter's house. And the Bible says that Jesus did not turn them away, but the Bible says he touched them, laid his hand on every last one of them. And the Bible says, and all of them were healed. Here's where I want to frame it and tell you, amen, we, we are, of course, enamored and excited and enthusiastic about the Lord's power to heal. But what captured my attention is when they got healed. Amen. He healed them when the sun had gone down. He healed them when it was evening time. He healed them, amen, when church services were over, the benediction had been given. Amen. The doors have been closed. The lights have been turned out. He healed them. I wish I had a witness here. He healed them when everyone else, amen, was retreating to their homes amen for uh how can i say to be secluded there for the evening amen to rest and refresh themselves for the beginning of another week no the bible says that during the time when other people were resting the bible says that that was the time that jesus began to resume ministry and can i tell you my friends that the power to heal is not something that can be managed and monopolized in our own way no when god gives us this power amen we got the 
understand, amen, that sometimes we are called, amen, to resume ministry in places and at times when other people are seeking rest from it. Here it is, my friends, that whenever you realize like Jesus did, amen, that you have the ability to meet a need. Let me try that one more time. Whenever you discover, amen, the fact that God has placed within you, amen, the ability to meet a need, that God has placed within you, amen, the solution to a problem. You've got to be motivated by the opportunity and not by the inconvenience. And I'm telling you right now, ministry, amen, most of the time is inconvenient. I said ministry most of the time is not when you want to do it. Ministry sometimes needs to be done at the time when you're supposed to be spending it with your family. Ministry, amen, is called to be done after everybody else has gone home. Amen. You're called back to the line of duty. Ministry is always inconvenient, but you got to seize the opportunity. Sometimes, amen, the thing is bigger than you, and the thing that's bigger than you, you really can't see how big it is. You just got to trust that if I'm faithful to God, I wish I had a witness here. If I overcome the feelings of inconvenience, that maybe God is going to do something that I couldn't see when I got started. Maybe the end of the thing is going to be greater than the beginning of it. Let me close here and tell you, child of God, you got to be motivated by the opportunity. I don't know, I don't know what I would have done, amen, had I known I had in my hand, amen, the ability to heal, amen, and they came knocking on the door at the wrong time. I don't know exactly how I would have responded. What I hope is that I would have been mature enough what I hope is that I'm be spiritual enough. What I hope is that I'm able to find the strength to crucify my flesh and put my own thoughts and feelings aside and say, right on, King Jesus. I'm going to let you have your way. And whatever it is you're trying to do, I'm just grateful to be a part of it. I pray. Listen, you ought to tell somebody that's beside you. Say, you better pray for me that I do the right thing. Because if they knock on my door at the wrong time, if they ask me, hey, man, when I'm trying to get some rest, I want to respond in a way, first of all, that glorifies God who gave me the gift. But I also want to respond in a way that will affect change and healing in the lives of others. I've got to close here. I'll tell you what kind of healing the Lord brought about that day. The word, the word says he touched them. That's what the text says. He touched them. He touched them and he healed them. He touched them and they were cured of their diseases. This, this, is, this is supernatural. It's not preventative medicine. Uh, he didn't tell them to go exercise. He didn't tell them to go take a vaccine. He, don't, he, didn't, he didn't tell them to go do something that would perhaps mitigate, uh, as it were, uh, another opportunity in the future of them catching the same disease. No, it was not palliative medicine. The Lord, when he laid his hand on them, it was not just an attempt to manage their pain and control their symptoms. No, the Bible says that when the Lord laid his hands on them, they were cured. This was curative medicine. And may I suggest to you, my friends, amen, that whatever they had when they came in there, they didn't have it on the way out. Amen. Because, because the Bible says that Jesus touched them. May I, may I help you with this as I close and tell you, child of God, we, we often wonder why the touch is so important. May I suggest to you in this climate that we're in, the touch is of critical importance. Amen. Because there's so much now being said that even uh, temporarily, amen, for a season, for a while, amen, that we ought to distance ourselves and remove ourselves, as it were, amen, from the presence of others. But, but may I suggest to you that there is a certain kind of care in the, that will result in the form of a cure that can't happen unless a connection has been established. Let me try that one more time and tell you, my friend, amen, that, listen, how can I say this? Even if the surgeon is going to perform the surgery, his hands or her hands have got to be involved. And I want to tell you, child of God, the power of the hand is to establish connection. Amen. The power of the hand in the text 
is so that Jesus could show them how much he cared. Amen. Listen, how he had enough power. When they came knocking at the door, he could have just said, listen, everybody be healed. Y'all go on back home. But no, one by one, I wish everybody would talk to me. He could have healed them collectively, but he healed them individually. Amen. He healed them individually to help them to understand, amen, that your person counts. Your issue matters to me. I wish I had a witness here. I'm not going to handle you in a dismissive sort of way, but I am going to establish a connection with you. Amen. I'm going to lay my hands on you so that I can transmit the cure. And what I want to close here today, my friends, and tell you, amen, that you and I have that power. It has to be developed. Amen. You have to be prepared in order to use it. But I got to tell you that you and I have the ability to prolong life. I said you and I have the power, amen, to extend life. Amen. We are created in the image of God. Amen. We are made in his likeness. Amen. We are followers of Christ. The same spirit that was in him is now in us. And can I tell you, child of God, that the way Christ lived his life is the way you and I are called to live ours. Let me tell you that you, just like Jesus had the ability to prolong life, you and I have that same ability. We have the power to prolong life. And I want to tell you, that's really, how can I say, uh, how we are to use, amen, this power. We are not to use it to hurt. We are to use it to heal. Amen. We are not to use it to maim. We are to use it to mend. This is, this is critical not only for what's going on in our world, but right here in our own city. Amen. I, I feel, amen, led this morning to just say a word, amen, to persons, amen, who are in those places where you feel trapped and vulnerable. Amen. You're taking matters into your own hands. Amen. You are filled with anger and resentment. Amen. You're taking the lives of others. It's a cycle that continues on and on. And many times it's our young people right here in the city and, and surrounding areas. I'm telling you, I know you have ability. I know you have capability, but you are not to use it to hurt and to maim, but you are to use it to heal and to mend. You have, amen, an anointing upon your life to prolong the lives of others. And I want to tell you, that's what we're called to do. I also want to say this not only to our young people, but I need to talk to the mature saints of God. Because I told you that if you're going to really use this kind of power, that those of you who possess it, you got to prepare yourself. Some of us have been in church longer than we can remember. And I'm telling you, it's about time, amen, for us to believe that we can lay our hands on the sick and they shall recover. These signs shall follow them that believe. I wish I had somebody that believed the Lord like I believe today. Amen. That if I lay my hands, hallelujah, amen on someone that God, amen, can use me, amen, to prolong the life of others, that God can use me to encourage some soul, that God can use me to help somebody else believe that they matter to God, amen, in the midst of this unfriendly world. I wish I had somebody that would join me and declare over your own life, amen, that I have healing power in my hand. It's in your care. It's in your custody. It's under your charge. You can heal it in your hands. Let me close the way I started. Because I know some of you are looking at cross eyes. So I never, I've never, I've never, I've never. Well, you never till you have. At some point, you got to start. You got to stop shouting over what you say you believe. And start activating your faith. Listen to me again. Jesus' ministry is done. He said, while hanging on the cross, it is finished. Not that it's finished, uh, that the work is finished as a whole. He, my work here on earth is finished. I have completed. My father sent me to do. It's our time now. It's our responsibility now. It's our opportunity now. We can't 
stick our heads in the sand. We can't walk around and curse the darkness. We can't walk around, be mad with the whole world because things are not the way we want them to be. Healing is in your hand. You saying, Bishop, should I extend my hand and lay it on somebody? Yeah, sure. Sometimes it's on the head, sometimes it's around the shoulder. Sometimes it's to grab somebody else by the hand. Sometimes it's to take your hand and pull a lever on the voting machine. It's in your hands. <laughs> I said, it's in your hands. The power of Christ is in your hands. Healing is in your hands. Would you bow your heads with me this morning as we pray? I feel the anointing of God. And I believe that what I could not say to you this morning, the Holy Spirit is making plain. And he is explaining and revealing what still remains hidden as it comes from my lips. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the revelation of your word. We thank you, Lord, for the leading and teaching ministry of the Holy Spirit, guiding all of us who listen this morning into your truth. We ask, oh God, that as we hear it and we receive it, that you will give us the courage to believe that, yes, we do have the capacity to cure and to change and to make better the community around us. They're going to come just like they came to Christ. They're going to come to the church. They're going to come to believe it. They're going to come to persons who have boasted in the past about God's presence in their lives. Lord, we want to be available and we want to be capable and ready to be used by you. We understand, oh God, that for us to be able to use appropriately this powerful gift that we possess, we got to be prepared to do so. We got to try it out on self before we test it out on sickness. Oh God, we understand that this power is developed within the halls of disappointment. We're able to lift up others because we do know what it means to be crushed and pushed down. God, I thank you that everything that we're going through is preparing us even the more. We're learning how to walk in humility balancing ourselves spiritually and realize that we have been graced with a gift that is unimaginable. We have no business with it, but it's except that you want to use us. So I thank you. I thank you, Lord, that someone's going to flip that switch. They're going to activate that gift. They're going to stir it up within them. They're going to extend themselves, even in this season of social distancing. And they're going to extend themselves, make their presence known and felt by their wider community. They're going to be agents of healing and health in the name of Jesus. We believe in your power. We, we believe, God, that that power works in us. We believe that it is greater than any form of of satanic power that is in the world. We believe it. So we will move, and we will behave accordingly. I thank you now, God. I pray, Lord, for that person who is at the place of decision this morning. They're asking you to come into their lives. I pray, oh God, that in the name of Jesus, that Christ will enter and save them from their sins, save their souls, even as we pray. Your word says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. If they can't frame their request in any meaningful way, if they can't articulate adequately what they feel, Lord, may they just call your name. Whosoever, Lord, save them like you saved me. Whosoever shall call on your name shall be saved. I pray, oh God, for that person who is being directed towards the Good Shepherd family. I pray, Lord, that, that as soon as this broadcast is over, they will reach out electronically by email. They will get in touch via our website and our app, Lord, and they will connect with us. I pray, Lord, that even in this season, that they will still be obedient to the leading of your will and spirit. I thank you in advance for all of these for whom I have prayed. 
We ask these blessings in Jesus' name. And I want to him who is able to keep us from falling and present us without fault before the presence of his throne with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Father, be dominion and majesty, honor and power, both now and forever, is our prayer for you, my friends. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you, good shepherd and friends. Thank you for tuning in this morning. We look forward to seeing you. The Lord say the same. Uh, on tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. and on through the week. But God bless you. There are uh, other opportunities. Please check out our, our Practical Life Institute. Amen. Our laboratory, check that out for those of you who haven't done so. We want to stay together and grow together in the Word. Amen. And so we pray that you'll do that. There are other opportunities that happened on last week. I pray that you took advantage of them. I do believe... Uh, that uh, perhaps uh, if you have not, you can certainly contact the church and get that information. But again, we just want to grow. We want to be stubborn about our spirituality. Uh, until I see you next time, I love you in Jesus' name. And you have a great, great Sunday. Thank you for joining us today for Good Shepherd Services. Giving online is easy. Go to goodshepherdbaptist.org and click the Give Online banner. Or, using the app, click the Give Online icon. Follow us on social media on Facebook at Good Shepherd Baptist, Twitter and Instagram at Good Shepherd BC. And the Good Shepherd app is yet another great tool to keep connected. Download the Good Shepherd app from the Apple iOS App Store, Google Play, or Amazon App Store. We air every Sunday on Fox Richmond at 7.30 a.m. Please watch and support the broadcast. Good Shepherd Baptist Church, 2223 South Crater Road in Petersburg, Virginia. You may call at 804-732-5969. Building a church, developing a community, expanding services, and impacting lives. We thank you for the support of this ministry. See you next time.